Hello everyone, I'm Travel Kai and welcome to the EDH channel. Thank you to EDH Alters for his patronage and support of the channel. If you'd like to support the channel as well, then you can visit Patreon and donate with the link in the description below. Failing that, a like, comment and subscribe is always appreciated. Now, let's have a look at everyone's opening hands. Turn 1 play for us in Woodland Chasm, not only is it a tap land, but it's a dual land so it will switch on the Tainted Wood. Never noticed the Phyrexian watermark on that. Just a bunch of lands on turn 1 for everyone, we draw in two Cabal Coffers, so I was thinking of going for a land with Demonic Tutor anyway, and that helps me to make up my mind on that, we'll go for the Urborg, Rampant Growth for kills, and the Ozolith for the Jund player. Go Go Batman has a Mind Stone ready for what is likely Arkham Dagson next turn. And there's a forest for us, so I think we have to go Evolution Sage here. Otherwise we'd end up with too many cards in hand from Read the Bones. No need to discard anything if we don't have to. And the first commander of the game, Rebek, Architect of Ascension. Followed by a Paradise Mantle. Greedo down to three cards in hand, plays Altar of Dementia. And there is that fourth piece of mana for Gogo, -Go, so it is a turn three Arkham Dagson. So for us, how's about we drop the forest? Nothing to proliferate just yet. And we've got plenty of walkers in hand, so I'm just going to concentrate on ramping here. And we'll go read the bones as well. A swamp and a Nissa on top. This Nissa is going to be a means of untapping the Cabal Coffers for more mana, so... Yeah, we've already got Garrett Wildspeaker though. I think I will get rid of the Nyssa for now. We'll get rid of the Swamp as well, because I dare say that we're going to get into a land regardless. And there we are, a Twilight Mire. Could offer up the trade to Gogo -Go for Arkham Dagson with our Evolution Sage, but I don't think they take it anyway, so I will leave that out of the red zone. The Paradise Mantle being equipped to the Architect. And now it is a Talisman of Unity. Along with a Sylvan Library, three cards in hand for kills. Holding up a single piece of white mana as well. Three cards left in hand and two mana held up, thanks to being able to tap the commander. Although deciding to just hold up the one piece because he takes that into the red zone against Gogo. -Go. And curiously, Greedo, not having the best of luck there, just deciding to tap out and pass, so it is a Solemn Simulacrum for Gogo. -Go. And Arkham Dagson will no doubt sacrifice that. And he does, that will draw him a card, and allow him to search for a non-creature artifact. And he gets himself a Thran Dynamo into play. Makes an island for the turn and goes for Burnished Heart, three cards left in hand over there. Now then, we won't be making use of the Evolution Sage this turn either, because I need to go Cabal Coffers here, I think. I want to get down both... Wild Speaker and Professor Onyx this turn, so I can minus her down. So let's go Cabal Coffers. Play the Garrick Wild Speaker. Untap two lands in the Cabal Coffers and a Forest. And then tap that down again. So that makes six. We've got two left over. Let's drop the Professor Onyx. And then we'll minus her down. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power amongst creatures that player controls. So getting rid of the Burnished Heart there and hopefully we'll be able to see the back of Arkham Dagson with someone else's removal. Argument to be made for us going for the Garrett Cursed Huntsman there. Yeah, maybe I should have done to get rid of the Arkham Dagson, but it's done now. We'll pass the turn. 
No life being taken to the Sylvan Library, and it is more card draw and an elemental bond, one card in hand for Billy Kills, and he plays himself a Golem Foundry. Now Tana the Bloodsower coming down for Greedo, he managed to make his fourth land, and we get a Chemister's Insight from the Mono Blue player, followed by a Hedron Crawler. Then activating the Arkham Dagson, sacrificing his Mana Dork. Might go for the Wand here because he does have four mana available. Nope, going for Spine of Ishsar, destroy a target permanent, getting rid of Professor Onyx. Yeah, I'd actually rather see the back of that than the Garrick Cursed Huntsman, so probably go for the Garrick next turn. Now I fabricate, search for an artifact, put it into hand. And they search themselves up the Chaos Wand. Oh, it's only three mana for that, I thought it was four. Yeah, another land for us, so how's about we go for the... Garrett Cursed Huntsman now, before we drop a land. Then we can minus down on that, get rid of Arkham Dagson, that will draw us a card. And gets us into Plum the Forbidden for when we eventually start making tokens. Untap a couple of lands with the Wild Speaker. Then if we tap down Cabal Coffers now, we'll get 5 mana. I was wondering about going for Nyssa and flipping her around straight away. Uh, but maybe it's best to go... We'll go Twilight Mire first. And we can proliferate on these two now, which means we can drop our Karth the Lion. And there is Garrick the Relentless, so I think I'll actually drop that this turn instead of Nyssa Vassward Seer. And then this can, yeah, this can fight the Tana, managing to very nicely control the board here with all these Garricks. And there we have Garrick the Veil Cursed being revealed, so we can start making wolf tokens. Make tokens with all these Garricks, actually. I will swing in towards Billy Kills, because he hasn't been hit yet. And this time Kills does go for some extra cards with Sylvan Library, going down to 33. And dropping a land, and it's a good one in Gavany Township. Now it's Tekik, the second commander, coming down for Kills. And throwing the Paradise Mantle onto there, which cannot tap for mana yet, because it has Summoning Sickness. Rampant Growth for Greedo, still catching up on mana, unfortunately. Over to Gogo -Go with a hard cast Chaos Wand. If they target us, we do have, uh, I think it's Beast Within and Assassin's Trophy in this list. I think they're more likely to hit Ramp, though, and that is an Explosive Vegetation after they targeted Greedo. And then going for a Clever Impersonator, which may go on Spine of Ishsar. And it does. And they get rid of the Veil Cursed with that. So because that dies, we reveal the top seven cards. And I'm not sure how Magic Online presents it to us, but Assassin's Trophy was in the top seven, so it might be that Gogo -Go could have got that with the wand. Anyway, we whiff on a Karth of the Lion. So it's back round to our turn, and we've got the Elder Spell, if we wanted to pile counters onto something. Let's drop down Nyssa, Vass would see her, first of all. And we can flip her around before we make another land. She fishes out a forest for us, so we'll just play that out. We might want the shuffle effects from a Sylvan Library later on. Put the Evolution Sage on the stack first, so that we can flip round the Nyssa Vassward Seer and proliferate onto her straight away. We only have to target with the Evolution Sage upon resolution, so might as well get the extra loyalty. Then we'll make some tokens with Garrick the Cursed Huntsman, and that is actually a plus one thanks to our commander. So we can edge our way up to the minus six, which is plus three, plus three, and trample on all of our creatures. Then we'll plus on the Nissa as well for some card advantage. And it is just another land, so we will get some more mana as well as proliferating again. And I think we'll just hold up Plum the Forbidden for these tokens, because we're not having the best of luck here. So let's minus down and make a beast. And we can leave it there, I think. Could go much more aggressive and have gone for Plum the Forbidden there. We would have had two mana floating and then maybe cast something else, but... Yeah, I think I like holding up Plum the Forbidden at the end of Gogo's turn, with only one card in hand over there. Could always go for a lot of overrun damage with Garrick Wildspeaker, if we decide to keep the tokens in play. Now a Blade of Selves, and that puts a charge counter on the Golem Foundry. This is 4 to equip, and the equipped creature has Myriad, so we'll no doubt go on the Itch Tech it, which will swing in this turn. 
and it does equip to the green commander throwing it towards Gogo. So Myriad triggers here and they're going to have a couple of itch techic tokens come into play and attack Greedo and myself. And each one of the golem tokens that enters will trigger the elemental bond so they'll get a couple of cards drawn here as well. Those creatures that came in with Myriad do die to the legend rule, they obviously keep the original. And oh, I didn't notice the original golem token is swinging in at Greedo as well. And Mindstone will put another counter on the Golem Foundry. Bootleg Greedo casting a Revel in Riches this turn, which can win out of nowhere, so we'll have to not forget that that's there. We'll have to be careful of going for Plum the Forbidden into that as well, because this does trigger on any creature an opponent controls die, and that includes tokens. Chaos 1 being activated onto Greedo again. No doubt going after removal, because this is the Jund player. And get say Minions Murmurs draw X cards and lose X life where X is the number of creatures you control which unfortunately is zero. Then the Mind Stone is sacrificed by the Mono Blue player which will trigger its Techic and put some plus counters on these. And now jump start on the Chemist's Insight will exile that for good. And they go up to four cards in hand, three mana available. Then Sorcerer's Spyglass as it enters the battlefield look at an opponent's hand. Choose any card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they are mana abilities, so... Could switch off one of our walkers here. Would very much like to get the emblem for this next turn, so this is really the one that they should be naming, I think. And they have chosen Garrick, Cursed Huntsman. Doesn't tell us whose hand they looked at, though. It just says that they cast it, but... Eh, not sure. So now without the emblem, I'm wondering if we go for Plum the Forbidden after all. I don't suppose there's any harm in doing it next turn, it's only two extra mana. Could still deal a bit of damage with these. So we'll see what we draw into off the top, hopefully it's not a land. <laughs> nope, but it is more ramp. Uh, so let's plus on Nyssa. Don't fancy doing the minus on Nyssa until we can win the game with it. That'll have to be an Alpha Strike because those lands do remain 6-6 six, six elementals. And we do get ourselves into Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. So let's tap down Cabal Coffers again. And that is 8 mana exactly. Drop the Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. And the great thing about our commander and its plus 1 ability to loyalty is that Ugin can come down... It will get a plus three, and then it can minus nine next turn, which will leave it in play and give us the limit break there. So that will be gain seven life, draw seven, and put seven permanents into play. So that's what we'll go for here. And we will shoot the itch techic, which will make a treasure token with revel in riches. We'll make ourselves a beast token here with the Garrick Wildspeaker. Uh, that is free because the minus one and then the plus one makes it zero. So we can still save the overrun ability on that. Oh, and what we could have done, completely forgot about Evolution Sage, it's the first time playing this deck. We could have got Ugin into play with seven loyalty. Played a couple of lands thanks to Bloodstained Maya, putting a couple more loyalty on it. And then gone for Cultivate as well. So that would have been at 10. We could have minus 9 and done the limit break that way. Oh well, we'll do it the old fashioned way and hope that it survives a play around the table. Put loyalty on all of our stuff here. Go cultivate as well. So with that, I think we just continue to play it safe and hold back as many blockers as possible. <laughs> Alright, Cathar's Crusade for Billy Kills. See if he can play out any creatures here. He can, that is Rebek, Architect of Ascension for the second time. We'll trigger the Elemental Bond for a card draw, put a plus counter on all of his creatures. So what do these have protection from? That is mana value 0, 2 and 3. Um, so we can block with our commander I think. Both of those going in at Ugin by the way. So, due to my not taking advantage of the fact that we could go for the ultimate on Ugin straight away, we might have to make use of the Elder spell next turn. Get rid of this, seeing as how it's useless, and dump it all onto Ugin. Either way, we'll put our commander back in the command zone. And another treasure will be made with Revel in Riches. Tender Shoot Dryad is a really good one for bootleg Greedo. 
and it will trigger during every upkeep to make a sapling token, which means we go around to Gorgo's turn and they get a 3-3. And now we have to have our walkers survive Gorgo's turn. Oh good, a trading post means they get two Chaos Wand activations. And it also means they can sacrifice Spine of Ishsar, so that gets rid of the Ugin most likely. Yeah, missing our chance with that. Replaying the clever impersonator because they got it back to the hand from the Spine of Ishsar trigger and not getting rid of the Ugin with their own Spine of Ishsar, instead making their own Ugin. Uh, that is a minus for six, so that will get rid of a bunch of our walkers. It will keep our Ugin in play. Uh, it gets rid of the Revelling Riches, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. Alright, well, we might as well put some loyalty on the Ugin by sacrificing the Bloodstained Mire. Altar of Dementia is going to Millers by sacrificing the Sapriling. And uh, they get rid of Ensnaring Bridge, a Beast Within, and Prismatic Vista. And then sacrificing their Tender Shoot Dryad, targeting us again. And this time it is Peer, Imaginative Rascal, and Wood Elves. So not the worst cards to lose there. We'll grab the Bayou and trigger the Evolution Sage. Then play ourselves a Plum the Forbidden in order to refill our hand here. We'll end up with five copies of Plum the Forbidden. Unless it gets countered by Gogo. -Go. So a bunch of Reveling Riches treasures come into play from that. We get more loyalty on our Garrett Cursed Huntsman, which we actually can't activate at the moment. And looks like we're going to get these Plum the Forbidden copies. So that is lose six life and draw six cards. And there's our Assassin's Trophy, so we could go for that this turn if we wanted to. Well, we'll see what else Gogo -Go has for us. Ugin resolving all the coloured permanents getting exiled. Still leaves a decent number of permanents in play at least. And then a Dark Steel Ingot, that's not too bad. And a Renegade map. Enters tapped, sacrifice it, search for a basic, put it into your hand. So I think I've got half a mind to blow up the trading post. So that they can't sacrifice the Spine of Ishsar. Or untap their Chaos Wand. Oh, I had it in mind that you could untap artifacts with this. You actually can't upon looking at it. Alright, well they can't sacrifice the Spine of Ishsar anyway. So we'll go for the trophy onto the trading post. They will get to search for a land here. Alright, a Garrick Primal Hunter, immediately to replace the Garricks that went down. I think we're okay to go for Ancient Tomb, throw down Sol Ring and our Commander here. Making 11 mana with the Cabal Coffers. So Karth the Lion enters, we will get huh, Garrick Apex Predator, which... I was wondering how to get rid of the Ugin. I think we would have to bolt it with our own Ugin, but now that we've got Garrick Apex Predator... Yeah, I think it makes sense to get that into play. So we'll destroy another Planeswalker. And that can be the Ugin Clever Impersonator. Play out the Garrick Primal Hunter. And we'll plus that for a Beast Token. Then they could get their Commander out again and get protection for these Golems. They don't have protection from 4 CMC at the moment. So we can throw our Karth in the way again if we want to. And let's just plus the Ugin. Like I said last turn, we could sacrifice a Planeswalker and pile it onto the Ugin just to get the limit break on that, but I'm not necessarily feeling the need to do that at the moment. Maybe do it next turn, if we're not liking the cards that we're getting into. Throw down the Phyrexian Arena and we'll go Kaya's Ghost Form onto our commander as well. Don't feel too bad about throwing it in the way of a Golem that way. It's Techic Salvage Splicer, not going for the Protection Creature. Instead, going for the Blade of Selves combination again. No haste on there, unfortunately. Still swinging in at Ugin with the Golem creatures, though, so we can just throw our Commander and the Beast in the way of those. So, Karth went down to combat there. When the Enchanted Permanent dies or is put into exile, return it to the battlefield under your control and it hasn't done so have I missed something or is magic online being weird there all right well I'm sure you can all let me know in the comments section if there's something I'm missing here there might be some permanent in play that stops death triggers or something although I don't think so 
Anyway, Necropotence for Bootleg Greedo, four cards in hand currently and plenty of mana. Bunch of life being put into the Necropotence here, not sure how many exactly, he had four cards in hand. And he ends up with 12. So he must have put eight life in there. Yeah, that's really annoying that Karth is now stuck in the graveyard. I don't think I have any means of reanimation for that because it's not that type of deck. And that is a really good source of card advantage for us, so... Yeah, we'll have to see how we manage in this game without our commander. The Renegade map being sacrificed by Gogo, -Go, which puts plus counters on the golems. Then Chaos Wand, again targeting bootleg Greedo, and it is Fungal Sprouting this time. Where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you control, get X Sapraling tokens. Doesn't control any creatures again. And now Tezzeret, the Seeker, that is the first means of untapping an artifact that he's gotten into. So untapping both the Thran Dynamo and the Chaos Wand. And now targeting me, we have seen the back of Assassin's Trophy and Beast Within. Uh, and that's what I was hoping for, is Yorgmoth's Vile Offering. A creature or planeswalker from graveyard to the battlefield, and you can destroy a planeswalker or a creature, I think it says. Yeah, you can destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker, so they went after our Garrick, Apex Predator, and then making a soldier with Throne of Empires. So they got the uh, clever impersonator back with the, where is it, Yorgmoth's Vile Offering. And then minus three on that, so that got rid of our Phyrexian Arena, unfortunately. Yeah, so don't have as much card advantage now. We can at least still minus on the Ugin. And we get Oath of Liliana, which isn't as good as we would like. Yeah, I really want access to my Karth here, because I would absolutely play it. And we'll just have to finally minus down on the Ugin and risk seeing the end of it to our opponent's Ugin. Alright, and that is Nissa Vital Force. We've got doubling season, so we can get some card advantage from the Nissa emblem. Bunch of mana though, I'm not liking these draws. So we put the doubling season into play. The Nissa Vital Force comes in with 10 counters on it. Each opponent has to sacrifice a creature, and we did have a Planeswalker come into play this turn, so we should get a zombie if Magic Online doesn't do anything weird. And actually, having said that, we can return the Karth back to our hand with this, can't we? Hmm, so maybe doing that this turn would be more sensible. Hitch Techic triggering again because a Golem was sacrificed there. Yeah, unfortunately, I'd really like to just straight up get the Emblem here and start drawing way more cards, but thanks to Magic Online, I think. I'm always remiss to blame Magic Online, but I don't see why else it's stuck in here. We have to use that to get our Karth back. So how's about a Toxic Deluge, first of all? And we can put 7 life into that. We'll just have to hope that Greedo doesn't... Uh, I'm, I imagine he might sacrifice treasures in order to protect these. Uh, and then it'll be a total waste of life and mana if he does that. So in that case, I'm just going to go for Karth here. And completely whiff on the Karth. Now, that's another way that we could have got our commander back out of the bin. So I think the thing here to do is to make a bunch of worm tokens with Garrick Primal Hunger. We're going to lose the Ugin anyway to the other Ugin, I think, so let's finally go for this Elder Spell. Elder Spell, target any number of Planeswalkers. This is destroy any number of target Planeswalkers, so we want to destroy the Ugin. So that is destroyed, and then we choose the Garrick. Put the counters on that. The Ugin is destroyed, so we trigger our Karth the Lion again. And this time we do not whiff. We get Vivian and Vraska. I think Vraska going after the Wand might be a good idea. So let's choose Vraska here. Minus on the Garrick, first of all. Make a bunch of Worm Tokens. We get 6-6 six, six Worms per land we control here. Hopefully we can start wrapping the game up if we don't see a board wipe. <laughs> so we make 28 Worm Tokens. And then we'll go for the Vraska. And if we had some haste, we could go for an Emblem, which <laughs> makes all these Worms even more of a threat. But I think it's best just to get rid of the Wand here. 
And because an artifact went down, it's Techic. We'll put plus counters on the golems. So yeah, let's just throw down the undergrowth stadium. Uh, Ugin can still minus and get rid of all of our tokens, but it keeps it from being plussed at least. I think I might sacrifice the Karth to the Vraska next turn and then we can get some card advantage and recast it. Could always go for this as well if by some miracle we keep the Worms in play. But we'll get blockers for two turns so we have to pass at that I think. And then Oath of Liliana will trigger thanks to the Planeswalkers entering. So we get two zombie tokens thanks to doubling season. They still don't have protection from... 4 CMC permanents over here. But Rebecca comes down regardless, so maybe they've got a 4 CMC artifact they can cast. Ha, <laughs> and they do, that is Helm of the Host. So now they can get through all of our stuff, including through our Carth the Lion. And they're aiming themselves at the Vraska because they're worried about the emblem there, I dare say. Maybe worried about us sacrificing our commander as well. Uh, going after Nyssa, which we would have had the emblem. That's really annoying that we don't get a chance to get the emblem there. And the commander is going in at the Ugin. That's actually really good. That means that we might keep our worm army. Anyway, it's Techic will get the Myriad triggers, which means they get some free golems. Then creating another golem with the golem foundry. None of us can block, so the Vraska goes down. As does the Nissa Vital Force. The Ugin goes down as well. We get a couple of Karth triggers for our efforts though. And okay, now we've got Liliana Dreadhorde General, which will draw us a lot of cards upon a board wipe. That might be the one to go for here. Yeah, I think Liliana Dreadhorde General is the one to aim ourselves at. That should be able to get rid of Arkham Dagson quite nicely as well. And then there is a Vraska Relic Seeker as well. Ah, there we go, a Damnation. Yeah, the board probably needed to go down there. I was hoping to keep it thanks to all of the worm tokens and we could have used it for some card draw, but... Yeah, it's probably best that it does go down here. We will certainly put Karth back in the command zone. Then animation module, that smells like a combo piece to me. But deciding to pass over to Gogo -Go with 7 mana available from the treasures and 10 cards in hand. Alright, a War of Invention where X is 3. Search for an artifact, put it into play. Probably just another one of the Throne of Empires cycle pieces, I imagine. And yeah, they went for Scepter of Empires. They can deal damage to Planeswalkers with that. Now, search for... Ah, they can complete the cycle here, can't they? So, that will be three damage to the Garrick, potentially. So, they now have Throne of Empires, which will make five tokens in the form of 1-1 Soldiers. This will deal 3 damage to a player or planeswalker. And that one will gain control of a creature. So the 3 damage does go onto the Garrick. Now I'll point out again, we have unbanned everything. The house bans are not online at the moment. We're just seeing how the games progress without any bans. So it might be that the last card in hand is Cyclonic Rift. Uh, we'll still get the chance... No, we won't. They can, if we cast the Liliana Dreadhorde General for the limit break, or the Vraska for the limit break, then he could go for Cyclonic Rift to get rid of this in response. So we're probably best casting the Vraska first. Yet another land for us. We'll drop the Misty Rainforest to make more mana with Cabal Coffers. Let's plus on the Garrick. That will make us two beast tokens. Actually, should have waited for... Yeah, should have waited for the Karth there. So we'll play the Karth, could have got an extra loyalty onto Garrick, but I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, there is a Vraska and a Freya Lease. We'll go for Vraska the Unseen. Play out Vraska Relic Seeker. We'll have a target player's life total become one, that can be Gogo. -Go. Let's go for Dreadhorde General as well. Hopefully it will sneak past Counter Magic. And it does, so that comes down with 12 loyalty. Each opponent chooses a permanent they control for each permanent type and sacks the rest. So we'll go for the minus on that straight away. This does get rid of lands as well, which is noteworthy. Noteworthy that Gogo -Go could steal away our Karth here. 
and then sacrifice all the soldier tokens, but by the time all the permanents are stolen, I don't think it's going to matter. So being kept is a land and a mana rock, a land and a treasure, a land, Thran Dynamo, and Tezzeret the Seeker. They will get the Spine of Isar back to hand, which they will be able to cast during their turn, because they'll be able to make six mana from the Thran Dynamo, thanks to Tezzeret. So probably a good idea to go for Vraska the Unseen here. And we'll destroy a non-land permanent in the Thran Dynamo. Just to get the game over and done with more quickly. It's noteworthy that thanks to the Urborg and the Yavimaya, all of the lands are forests and swamps. They're all bayous, which is an interesting thing. Argument to be made for them making a full cycle of these for each colour now that green's got one. Anyway, go go decided to scoop at that. So just for the fun of it, we'll go for the assassin tokens. And we do get six of those thanks to the doubling season. So we shall pass the turn over to our opponents. We also get a couple of zombies at the end of the turn thanks to Oath of Liliana. A Lightning Greaves for kills. Black Blade Reforged for Greedo. And then it's round to our turn, we get into some more mana, about 50% of the deck is mana because the Planeswalkers are like 5 mana and up for the most part, so we do need a lot of mana in this deck. Let's just go for an Assassin token, one into each. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, they lose the game. And there we are, managing to pull out a victory with Karth the Lion. Very impressed with this commander, didn't realise how relevant the Death of Planeswalkers triggering it would be. But we actually got some decent card advantage from that, thanks to a lot of Planeswalkers going down, thanks to our opponent's ample removal. So be sure to let me know which other commanders you would like to see from Modern Horizons, and if you would like to see this one again. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave it a like and subscribe, leave a comment in the comments section, and you can support on Patreon just like Billy Kills, Bootleg Greedo, and Go Go Batman do. Big thank you to you if you decide to do that. I'm Travel Kai, on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.